Hello, my name is Stefan Wintermeyer. In today's screencast, I'll talk about authentication. Authentication means that I have a user and I can log in with that user and um, I can sign up with that user. Uh, there are a couple of good to go gems for that, like device or OmniAuth, but actually it's pretty easy to set up authentication by yourself. So today I'll show you how to do that with a fresh vanilla Ruby on Rails 4.2 application. Let's start with a, a new application, Rails new, new shop. Okay, let's cd into that. And first thing, uh, we have to change the GAMP file. We, do, we don't need a JSON API, so I deactivate it. But we do need bcrypt for the password encryption, because we don't want to store passwords in the database uh, clear text. So I run a bundle. Next, I create a default page uh, with an index, uh, with a, a page controller. And for that to work, um, config routes, uh, let's get rid of these. And root page index. So now if we start the Rails application. Localhost. Three thousand. Here we are. Okay. Um, I made a mistake. I want to use that terminal for that. Next, we create a, a user scaffold. That'll be the model where we store the user information. So, rates generate scaffold user. Uh, we want to have a first name and a last name an email address and obviously a password, but we don't store the password, we store a password digest. So that's a one-way encryption where we, can, where we can check that the password is correct, but we don't see the password itself. The password digest um, switch um, tells the um, generator, the scaffold generator, to create a form where you see that the, the, the password um, can't be seen. And uh, for example, we see at the model users, um, we see this here, uh, and uh, has secure password. That's all because I used password um, digits. Um, so the generator already knows that I want to have a um, has secure password um, method. Let's add a couple of validations. The first name should be there. The last name. Obviously the email address. Let me uh, add a, a format validation with a snap. So that's a very basic formatting validation. Okay. Two underscore s method. And we're good to go. Let's try that by creating a new user users new oops ah i didn't run the migration break db migrate okay let's try it again yeah here we are okay first xbird.com password Okay, the user was created, and let's double check in the database 
what was saved. User first. And you can see here, um, there's a password digest. So the password itself is not stored, but a checksum to uh, make it possible to, that to, 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 to check if the given password was right. So that's a secure method of doing that. So now we have a user and we have the data to check the user, but we don't have any mechanism. So we need some sort of, of session. And because we are RESTful, um, we want to have some, some, some session controller. So let's generate a controller, sessions, new, create and destroy, because we want to be able to create and destroy a session. Let's check the, the routes for that. Uh, let me, you know what, let me do that new. I need the resources. But only for new, create and destroy. And for a nicer user interface, uh, we create a couple of better routes. Okay, so let's see. That's looking good. Now we need a login form. So that would be the sessions new form. App use sessions new. And let me do that by snap. Okay, so that's a pretty normal form. Uh, because we have a session resources, we can use all the tools. Uh, all the normal tools like form tag, sessions path, and um, we need the email and the password. So we can store that. And let's see how that looks. Uh, login. Okay, that looks perfect. But for it to work, we need um, to change the controller. So app use uh, app controller sessions. Um, then the create. We don't have to change anything in the new control uh, in the new method here. Um, just in the create user user find by email params email. That is the email address which we um, enter here. And if that user, if we find a user and the user authenticates uh, with a password, and the authenticate method is uh, a method uh, which gets uh, generated um, by the has password um, helper in the model. So uh, we don't have to take care about that. It's just there. So if that's tr both true, then we can create a session variable. Let's call that user underscore ID with a user ID. And we do a redirect to the root URL and lock it in as render new end. And for the destroy, we just set the session user underscore ID to nil and redirect to the root URL notice locked out. Okay, so that should work now. Let's check it. Smith example.com super secure password. Okay, it seems to work. I just don't see anything like if I log out now. Uh, let's see that. Yeah, it's all just that that index page. Um, so we should add some uh, HTML 
on the header where we see what's happening if I'm logged in or not. But first we have to create some sort of current user method. Uh, we do that in the applications controller. So it's going to be a private method. Uh, we call it dev current user because everybody calls it current user. And we just say if id session user id, if we find anything, um, we take the first one. If we don't find anything, the first one will be nil, so that's okay. And so now we have a current user method for all the controllers, but um, we obviously want to have that information in the view too, so we have to create a helper method. Helper method current user. So now we can exit that current user in the view too. We open there. Application HTML EIB. Let me include that with a snap. Okay, what do we have here? Um, that's just for CSS. Um, if we have a current user, so if that is not nil, then we display logged in as current user email. Secondly, we have a logout link, so that's going to be the logout pass here. Um, if we don't have that user, we show a sign up link and a login link. And at the bottom, I added a, f a loop through all the flash messages. So uh, if we have a fla flash message, um, we show it here. Um, and for that to work and not have any duplications, we have to uh, delete the flash message display in in the index view and in the show view of the user. So because we have the same functionality there twice. Okay, let's do a reload. That's looking good. And log in. smithexample.com super secure password. And now you see logged in as smith. So let's that's what we what we want to have. Um, this is a flash message here. So if we make a reload, that's just the the header here. And if you, if I want to log out, just click on that, and now I'm logged out. Perfect. I can sign up with this one here. Uh, this an error. Ah, uh, here we have the problem. That's going to be a plural. Okay, mm, let's try it again. And here we go. Now we can um, sign up uh, a new user. Um, let's try that. Um, and you know, while I'm here, wouldn't it be cool to have that new user to have it locked in right away? And that's very easy to do. Let's go to the controller. Um, controller users controller. We create a new user here. So if we create it here, just say session user underscore ID is the user ID of the new user. And let's redirect that to root URL. And we're good. So Let's create that. Now I'm logged in as Stefan Wintermeyer right away and um, I can log out. That's all for authentication. In the next screencast, I will show you how to use that information to create an authorization system. Please send me an email with feedback and uh, please share the screencast on uh, Twitter and Facebook and uh, whatnot. See you next week. Bye.